Hi, I'm Anna of All Trades, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my tiny woodworking shop. Bonus, it's also an Easter egg hunt to see all of my old projects from all of my old videos. See how many you can find. This video is brought to you by Woodcraft. Starting over brings with it a whole lot of awesome new opportunities, like building my dream shop, but I couldn't go that long without having a workshop of my own. So I decided to turn this little office space into an office and a wood shop. And it's working out really, really well for me so far. One thing that I take really seriously with every space that I'm going to be spending a significant amount of time is aesthetics. So what better thing when I first walk in the door than to see this sign that my friend Mark Thomas Stumped Woodworks made for me the day that we moved into our house here in Nashville. That day, 29 strangers showed up and helped us unload the moving truck. What had taken me six days to fully load and put on the truck was unloaded completely in less than an hour's time. As you step one foot further into the shop, you can see my mandolins, one of which that I built. Directly below these mandolins is the shave horse that I built, and I used this, obviously, to work on chairs and to carve spoons and other things like that. Below it, I'm storing my enormous saw vise. This is for sharpening panel saws. This is my little reading nook, and emphasis on little because this is a very small shop, but it is a huge improvement over my laundry room workshop that I was in before I moved into my bigger workshop in Seattle. So. I'm definitely not complaining. I love my tiny wood stove. It keeps scraps and other things from collecting in my shop. And it's just really fun to, you know, have a nice warm fire while I'm reading. Although I probably will have a lot less opportunity to use it here in Tennessee than I did in Seattle, but that's all right. And here we are at my workbench. And right now I'm working on another whiskey cabinet. This is one of my absolute favorite projects for a whole bunch of reasons. First, because I was able to teach this class at the Lost Art Press storefront. And for those of you that have been following me for a long time, know that Christopher Swartz is the reason that I pretty much got really into hand tool woodworking. I also love this project because I wrote a magazine article about this design, and it is one of the few things that I've also been able to see a whole bunch of you guys make and show off in the wild. My favorite thing that's hanging on this shelf is my tiny Windsor chair that I made with Greg Pennington here in Tennessee at his shop right before we moved here. And this project is so special for so many reasons, mostly because it was my last moment of peace and sanity and calmness before we embarked on this crazy move. And um, this is probably the last vacation that I'll have for quite some time. Right here on my bench is a restored antique quick release vise, and it's extra special because it was actually restored for me, well, I didn't know it was for me, by my good friend Pat, who actually helped fuel a lot of my hand tool loves, and I actually thought he was restoring it for himself, so I made him this handle for it, and then he ended up gifting this to me, and that's pretty special, so of course, I had to put it onto my bench. I guess I should talk a little bit about my workbench because this is one of the very few things that you'll see in here that I made before I had a YouTube channel. This actually was my first project. My brother-in-law introduced me to hand tool woodworking and Christopher Swartz and got me started along this whole path and he and I built this together in his garage. These were my very first dovetails. This is a crazy tricky joint to try for the first time doing that, but hey, eight years later and it's still solid as a rock. These six by six Douglas fir legs are attached to the maple and elder top with a through mortise and tenon. And then of course it's drawboard and pegged, which basically squeezes the joint together as you do it and holds it there forever and ever. One interesting thing about all this is that some of the wood, especially these six by six posts were somewhat wet when I put it all together. So it's over time shrunk and still, Solid as a rock. I should also talk a little bit about the height of my bench. I designed it to have a very low center of gravity so that I could, you know, use my core as I was hand planing wood. As it turns out, it's probably even a tad too short. So in my new workshop, I'll build a new workbench that's a little higher. And of course, I'll make a video about that one. Thankfully, bench height can be easily fixed with a Moxon vise. 
this is another vise that lifts my work up and also supports it across its entire area there. I have all these bench holes in my bench and I can use hold fasts like this one to secure it to the bench top. But I've actually found that I really like using quick clamps instead. One really fun thing about this Moxon vise in particular is that the hardware was made by my friend Jason Thigpen from Texas Heritage Woodworks, who wanted to come up with an affordable way to make hardware for homemade vices like this one. The thing that I really like about this vise, besides the fact that it raises my work up to a workable height, is also that it supports your work along its entire length. So, you know, when you're sawing dovetails, it will hold this nice and taut and keep it from chattering. Here is my saw bench, and this looks a lot like a sawhorse, but is actually much more versatile. It is perfect for breaking down stock, so when I'm using a panel saw, I can do so with the work well supported and at a comfortable position. One step away from the workbench is my Dutch tool chest, and this is where I have very well organized all of the tools that I use on a regular basis that aren't hanging up on the shelves up there. And this is a fantastic storage method. It's portable, so I can, you know, wheel it over to wherever I want to use it. There's a video about this project on my channel as well, so you can make sure to check that out. Down here, I have the most coveted item in my entire shop, my spool box. And inside of it, I keep all kinds of things that I just might need sometime or another. Mostly a lot of rasps and files and screwdrivers, ruler, those kinds of things. It doesn't work super well because it kind of collapsed during the move, but I'm gonna fix it someday. Within easy reach of everyone's workbench should be a fully set up, ready to go sharpening station. It's absolutely crucial for your sharpening station to be easy to access and easy to use because then, shocker, you're actually gonna use it. I sharpen my tools about every 15 minutes of hard use. And if I have to get a whole bunch of stuff out to sharpen my tools, I'm gonna wait longer to sharpen them and then that's going to encourage me to be lazier about sharpening as often as I should. A sharp tool is a safe tool and it's a whole lot more enjoyable to use. I'll give you a quick peek at my sharpening station, but if you want to know more about my sharpening methods, make sure you go check out my videos on sharpening tools. Here we have my water stones, the stone that I use to flatten my water stones, and the diamond plates that I use when I'm teaching classes. I also have my favorite honing guide, the Lee Nielsen Toolworks Honing Guide, and a strop with polishing compound on it. I also have a little rag here to dry my hands, and a polishing cloth with jojoba oil very present so that I can wipe my tools and protect them with oil every time I'm finished sharpening. I had to buy this little cabinet because I needed a place to put all my sharpening stuff, but also because I needed more storage for things like carving chisels, more chisels, drawbar pins, floats, rasps, and a chisel project that I've been working on for about eight years now. And by that I mean I worked on it eight years ago and never finished. And here we've got some chair making tools. And in here we've got a plane that I need to restore. That's another video project that I'll be doing soon. Some auger bits and an antique plane that I refinished a whole long time ago and my panel razor plane. That's one of my absolute favorite tools. Here we have my very first tool cabinet and after the workbench, this was my second project. It actually used to be a whole thing that opened up with a piano hinge down the side, so that's what this is all about, but I decided that it actually worked a lot better as a standalone hanging cabinet and I gave the other half of this cabinet to Daryl when I sold him our old farm because it just seemed nostalgic to leave him with some tools and a tool chest that I built while I was there. A few things that I really like about this design are this saw till that, you know, allows me to just keep a couple handy saws right there. By the way, this is my absolute favorite hand saw made by my friend Eric Florip. Um, and also the way the planes are stored in here. This actually was my brother-in-law's idea and it works fantabulously well. It basically uses gravity to keep your planes perfectly upright and looks pretty cool here. And while I'm standing here, I'll just give a really little thing. This is actually sawdust that I took from my grandfather's workshop when he passed away in 2001. And the craziest thing is that 
when I open it, it still, to this day, smells like his shop. And that's a pretty cool thing. The awesome thing about this tool chest, much like the Dutch tool chest, is that it also holds pretty much everything you need to have a working set of tools. I have a rip and a cross cut panel saw, and then my hybrid filed saw by Eric. I have a dovetail saw and a coping saw, a place to hold my scrapers. My chisels are stored in here. I have two different router planes there, my spoke shaves there, my grandfather's hand plane that I restored and try to use on every single project. And then you have the only three hand planes that anyone really needs, a jointer plane, a jack plane, and a smoothing plane. Inside the drawers are a couple things that are also pretty special. A marking gauge that was made for me by my friend Jeff Hamilton, my furniture stamps that I used to put a touch mark on my furniture, and router plane blades. Router planes are my favorite kind of plane if no one knew that already. Right here we have my spoon carving toolbox, and actually this was my grandfather's toolbox. So again, another piece of significance there. And in here I've got my hook knives, my axes, um, various spoon carving accoutrements. Behind me here, you'll see the top part of the writing desk project that I did with Mark Spagnolo, the wood whisperer. And that's only because I actually had to repurpose the desk part for my computer when we moved here because I had no other furniture. This just holds a whole bunch of random shop garbage. We have my tiny workbench with my Marco Terenzi tools, my tiny anvil. If you don't know this about me, I'm super obsessed with tiny things. So. There's that, everything here is fully functional. The plane takes shavings, the mallet obviously fixes the hold fast into place and the vice works as well, but it's currently holding something. So let's not have a disaster there. Over here, we have the wall of shame. And this is all of the projects that I've been working on for a ridiculous amount of time and haven't finished. Uh, here's the coffee tables that I was working on at, for Adam the first week that we moved here. As you can see, those have moved right along. Some pitchforks, you can expect these videos sometime by 2050. Um, another whiskey cabinet that is also in progress. The Dutch tool chest that some of you may have watched me build on YouTube. It is currently waiting for me to finish setting up my blacksmith shop so that I can finish making hinges for it and put it back together, paint it, all that jazz. A ton of people ask me how it is that I manage my time and my projects. And this, my friends, is how. This is called scrum analysis and hanging on these little pegs are whiteboards that contain basically the way that I run my entire life and my entire schedule. I learned about this process from my friend Josh Nava. Um, you can look up resources online on scrum analysis. I've talked a lot about how this helps me manage my focus and my attention deficit as well as my depression. It works amazingly well, but it's a constantly evolving thing and yeah, it's helping me do a whole lot more than I was able to do before I started doing it. The nice thing about all of these panels though is that they can also be flipped around so that if looking at all of my to-dos is stressing me out, I can just put them away and forget them, forget about them for a little period of time. Over here we have my Kennedy chest that also holds a whole bunch of random shop stuff from my pencils and ridiculous amounts of pencil lead. Uh, I, also pretty obsessed with writing implements, so there is that. And then one of the few collections that Adam allowed me to bring to Nashville. Well, I mean, let's be honest, he didn't allow me. It just happened because he didn't know about it. My collection of dividers and calipers. If you've ever seen my logo, the symbol A comes from a pair of dividers and also happens to look like an A from Anne of All Trades. Right behind me is another shamefully unfinished project. This is now a theme, I guess, uh, but I built it a few years ago with my friends at Homestead Heritage in Waco, Texas. And currently it's a holder for all of my snacks. And here is one of the first bowls I turned and a very fancy way to eat my Cheerios with my fresh cow's milk, a guilty pleasure because I spend basically all day, every day in here, I little kitchenette coffee maker, microwave. Over here we have my water tank, which is probably the best $70 I've ever spent because it keeps me hydrated, which is also another very, very important thing about managing stress, depression, and focus issues. So here we go. Then in my fridge we have popsicles, pickles, keto meat sticks, basically all the necessary items.
down here we put everything that I need to be out of my sight because I have to have a clean surface in here to be able to focus on anything that I'm ever doing. Here's my tiny little bathroom and I will show it to you later, I promise, but it needs a little renovation. Actually, the little kitchen that I was just showing you over there is going to replace the shower that is unnecessarily currently in here and then that can become another little workstation and give me some more room to do pot de bourrées in the wood shop. Over here we have my desk. You can find that video online as well. My little printer stand because who has time to have breakfast in bed anyway. My democratic chair. This video hasn't come out yet, but it will soon, so have patience. And of course my computer. This is where I do all my emails, all my editing, all my everything and everything. And then when I'm sick of doing that, I look over here and I practice my mandolin as well. We have a TV that I've turned on exactly one time that was put here to watch YouTube videos, but let's be honest, because I make the YouTube videos, I don't have a ton of time to watch them. And my other whiteboard that helps keep me focused. And the coolest of all coolnesses, the plans for my dream woodworking shop, which will soon be right there. A huge thank you goes to Woodcraft for sponsoring this channel for the last two years and making, making videos like this possible. I am so thankful for their support and the fact that they even exist because they are a fantastic place to go physically to the store to get advice from actual woodworking experts when it comes to buying tools, buying finishes and other supplies that you need for your projects. And they have an easy to navigate website where you can buy all those same tools, supplies and wood for your projects from the comfort of your own home and have it delivered there as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel in that way. Thank you also for your support, encouragement, and patience as I get everything set back up here in Tennessee. I hope you leave this video feeling challenged, inspired, and excited to get outside and to do things with your own hands as well. Cheers. It's all about the aesthetics. Yeah, it's all about the aesthetics. There's garbage on my floor and urine actually, let's be honest. And there's like poop in that corner. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> and I can just, like crouch down yeah, 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 or I could just like turn here. Yeah, sure. All right, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no.